Welcome back. We're discussing the importance of the Hajj and how it's changed centuries after the first pilgrimage. Let's hear from our distinguished panel more. Let's go back to uh, uh, London and Sammy Fortune. Behind you is the Palace of Westminster uh, with Big Ben, uh, the bell and the clock tower there. In Mecca, there's something, basically a copy of that, but even bigger, surrounded by hotels and growing and growing and growing. In fact, you can see it when you're going around the Kaaba. Is that development too much? Uh, in my opinion, I, I do think it dwarfs the, the holy site, and I did go on Umrah before and after uh, the construction of that building, um, and I did feel that it, it did dwarf it. I mean, I know in the past that um, residents nearby the Kaaba would construct their houses with a limited height out of respect for the surrounding building, um, but then I do understand uh, Mr. Khashoggi's argument about uh, the need to accommodate the, the pilgrims, and in terms of history and accommodating pilgrims, we can see that and the latest thing, which was the uh, removal of the Ottoman and some of the Abbasid columns. Mm. Um, and unfortunately, um, you know, some of those weren't taken apart so well. Some of them fell to bits. Um, a Turkish team were involved in trying to reconstruct some of that um, at a site near Arafa. Um, one of them was telling me that despite CAD, despite all the advanced technology, they were struggling to put back some of these what would seem very simple arches. These were, this was a structure that was con constructed by uh, Sinan in its latest phase, one of the architectural geniuses of the Islamic world. And the domes were so technologically advanced that they aided um, convection currents. They helped cool down pilgrims. And there is a worry that this technology, you know, every time people think they're the, the most superior who've existed. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a big fear that we're losing something or we're losing access to study something um, that had a profound effect on our, our culture, technology, and the way people lived. But that has to be balanced quite carefully with the need to expand for, for the pilgrims. Um, I mean, a fa there's a famous Islamic uh, uh, saying where the prophet equates the life of one believer to way more than the, the, the structure of the Kaaba, or, or mm. uh, you know, if it was destroyed, the life of somebody is worth way more than a, than a structure. Um, so I think all those have to be balanced. Sami Angawi, like uh, the gentleman in Toronto said, um, he did have a plan to do what he called surgical development, to, to allow this balance. But I think because of the con context, yes, he did uh, several decades ago. And unfortunately, uh, I think he was, uh, was overruled, I believe. Um, and, and the sad thing is, I think because of the context of, of education and the drive and the need to modernize so fast, um, that the, the balance has been outweighed. And to be honest with you, the average person uh, that I've met in Saudi they, they care about improving the quality of life. They want jobs, right. they want uh, education for their children, a decent house. The, these are the, the main concerns. And unfortunately, culture and history and the preservation of history in Saudi and in the peninsula uh, is a luxury for the, for the wealthy. Um, for example, Abdullah Aziz Khaki has a fantastic museum in Medina about the, the history of the uh, Masjid al-Nabawi. And he's done fantastic work. He's written a book. Um, but uh, I think sometimes there's a little bit of complacency uh, that uh, when I went to go and research some of the old buildings in Medina, it had already been done by, uh, you know, Dr. Kaki, and, right. and, you know, it wasn't necessary for me to do much more. Um, and one last but example Sami, that I will, Sami, will share with you. That, yes? But, sure. Sami, this argument that you're making is very valid, but it is, we, mm -hmm. we need to sort out how is this different than this argument playing out in every major metropolis um, mm -hmm. around the world? This is the same argument. I think the we important thing is that it's, it's, it's the holiest balance. Islamic site. Yeah. No, I know. And this I, is I, where I, some of the yeah. early, yeah. I think that, that, that's a valid point, isn't it, Haroon, that this, this, this is the center of Islam. This is where hundreds of thousands and now millions of pilgrims go, and, and it reflects on the religion, does everyone want to see a no, Starbucks? No. So it equally reflects on the religion that more Muslims are able to do uh, the Hajj, which is one right. of the five pillars of Islam. It is not one of the five pillars of Islam that I go look for architectural wonders of the past and learn from something as much as I may want to, but a greater duty. Uh, but I mean, the Quran says internal... that you must always you must always challenge your you challenge and strive exactly. and question uh, to get a right. deeper so, understanding of, of and part of that is not only through text, it's through sources. I mean, example today, I've bought one of the earliest Islamic coins. Uh, we've got it, you know, it's a Sasanian Arab Islamic coin, but it's one of the first coins that has written in it, Bismillah. We now have a context, we have uh, a way of understanding when things were written, how they were written. Um, 
There's so much more angles you can get from material sources, not just coins, but archaeological sites, than you can from an oral tradition. There's nothing no wrong with question. an oral tradition. Oral Absolutely. tradition has primacy in, in the Arabian Peninsula. But um, uh, we have to understand that in order to get a deep understanding, especially in our challenging times uh, with the things that are going on, we have to look and study and at least try and record. If it has to be demolished or, and cannot be moved, at least try and record in detail with teams from various backgrounds to get a better understanding of, of the, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu life and the early historical times uh, in Islam. Uh, we can no never question. stop trying no. to understand. I mean, no yeah. question in the abstract that is absolutely correct. But question is, it's mm -hmm. a subjective thing. Where do you draw the line? Mm -hmm. Would you have drawn the line mm -hmm. on Mecca where it was in 1950 or 1960 or 1980 or today or tomorrow? Or should we say what has happened has happened? As sad as it is from an architectural and historical point of view, that no new development should take place. You know, I tell you a story. Uh, in, on one of the uh, trips to Jeddah and uh, Mecca and Medina, I interviewed the, the deputy minister who was in charge of the Hajj. So I asked him mm -hmm. what Sami is mentioning. I said, you know, there was an Ottoman fort here, um, and it's gone. What do you have to say about that? And his answer was uh, instructive. Uh, he said, uh, I packed it in boxes, and I put it away for those who wish to preserve it. And you know what? Three million people come every year. Not one single person has asked me what happened to the fort. Uh, my, uh, duty here, my duty here is to make sure that the hajis um, uh, are able to perform the hajj, and they're able to do it in greater numbers if they wish to come. Already there's a quota around the world from every country. Right. And I'm not justifying everything that they're doing. I'm simply saying this debate is not as one-sided as Harun. it is often made out to be. That's all I'm saying. Harun, this is sure, excellent. No, uh, this and is, I guys, think guys, we have a similar understanding in that. Time. Sorry, uh, I, a fascinating discussion, but I do feel that we should bring in Jamal uh, from Jeddah here. Please. Would you like yes, to weigh yes. in on this debate? You're, you are in Saudi Arabia. Look, uh, right now in Saudi Arabia, there is a very strong drive among Saudi architecture uh, uh, archaeologists who uh, are interested in preserving the, uh, the, the heritage. But we know we cannot do that. Right now, uh, the, the Grand Mosque of Mecca uh, incorporated the historical city of Mecca beyond mm. the city of the Prophet itself, mm. beyond the, city, uh, the, the Grand Mosque of Medina, uh, uh, incorporated even the Ottoman city of Medina mm. that existed up to, let's say, 1950. Mm. Uh, my, my own home is now part of the mosque. So there is no way we can preserve those homes. And the other point, when the people come to Mecca and Medina, their focus, it is not an Ottoman uh, castle. Uh, for, 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 for fortress. It is the Kaaba itself. As long mm -hmm. as the Kaaba is there, they are happy. Uh, and they, they want to be close to the Grand Mosque, so hotels have to be built. But those uh, uh, Saudi archaeologists, like Dr. Abdelaziz Ka'aki, who was mentioned, they are trying their best to either rebuild those locations in models here and there around the cities, but people are not interested. I, 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 would, I think we need to, to, to increase programs for people to see Medina and Mecca the way they used to be, but most of the people, they, they are all already busy to perform a ritual which take their time up to five or six days. So what is left for, 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 for the past, uh, they are more concerned with their presence. Sure. Uh, so it is, I, I would like to see more, uh, um, um, more heritage, more, more, more uh, buildings of the past preserved. But I, again, with, with, with the number of millions, uh, uh, I want to correct something about the Ottoman uh, arches and columns uh, that uh, 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 m my colleague uh, said that they were destroyed. Uh, no, they were not. They were destroyed, but then they were rebuilt again surrounding the Kaaba. Rebuilt, yes. If you That's take right. a, a look at And 70% of them are in, there. In, 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 in that the was city. to en enlarge the Tawaf. Uh, area. Jamal, yes, sorry, I, I got uh, distracted. Jamal, Jamal yes. I'd just like to move on for, for a second. A fascinating discussion, uh, and we're learning so much. But in terms of the breakneck speed of the development of Mecca, there have been accidents. Uh, we've seen cranes falling, we've seen uh, uh, people die. In fact, that has led to some criticism outside uh, the kingdom of how this has been handled. How, how, how would you respond to that? 
Alhamdulillah, this Hajj was a successful Hajj. No single uh, accident took place, mm. and that uh, what we want to keep. Uh, but do uh, accident do happen? Uh, you, it, it, the problem with the Hajj, it is the uh, it, it is the traffic of a, a huge number of Hajjis. It, it is like letting out a million uh, p uh, people out of a stadium, and you want to make sure that everybody arrive his home safely. Every day throughout the Hajj for three, four days, the government has to maneuver a million and eight hundred uh, thousand people out of their tent city to the Grand Mosque of Mecca, to, to the Kaaba, to the Jamarat areas, and bring them back to the tent safely. That's why we have to, to, we have to develop a, a plan for that. Uh, right. That's why Saudi Arabia is very strong, very keen in stopping any diversion, diversions, any political activities, any reasons for people to argue with each other because that will lead to a blockage and a blockage will lead to a stampede. Okay. That's what happened last year and that's why Saudi Arabia is very much insistent that the, when the Muslim arrive to Mecca, they leave their politics behind and just perform their Hajj and, uh, 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 and go for uh, the, the rituals and, uh, and ask for the mercy of God. Jamal Khashoggi in Jeddah, thank you very much for joining us. Haroon Siddiqui in Toronto, also thank you. And Sammy Fortune from London as well. A very stimulating discussion on the subject. That's all we have time for. Thank you for joining us. We leave you with one last look at this year's Hajj. Thanks so much for being with us.